let's go ahead and dig into this design. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to redesign this part that I did so many years ago using sheet metal and all of these techniques that I find very valuable. So let's go ahead and get into SolidWorks. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is there's some standard information that I want to be able to leverage. And I'm going to set up what we call a global variable. Now, this global variable is going to be, give me the ability to, to call this value in multiple locations. In this case, I'm going to set up a variable for the depth of the tray of that toolbox. Now, I want the height of this tray to always be proportionate to the depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start writing an equation right here by simply typing in enter and then calling up the previous variable. Um, now, as I create multiple variables here, I like to kind of organize my thoughts. Over here on the far right of the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and type in a little comment. And all this is gonna do is the next time I'm in here, this remind me of what this variable is actually gonna be driving. Now this last variable that I'm gonna set up is gonna be the standard length of a flange. So I'm gonna be creating a lot of, lots of different support flanges. And I don't wanna to have to type in the same value over and over. And on top of that, I want to be able to change all those standard flanges if I need to down the road. So I'm going to drive those with what we call a global variable. Now, once I have these variables set up, I'm ready to start my initial design. And to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to start a sketch on the right plane. And I'm going to lay out some very simple lines that are going to represent the overall profile of this toolbox. Now, as I start drawing this, I'm always going to add a smart dimension. Now you guys might already be heavy SOLIDWORKS users, but one thing I like to introduce is organization by naming your dimensions. In this case, I'm gonna call this dimension depth. And I want this dimension to be driven by a, a variable that I've already previously set up. In order to do that, I'm gonna type in the equal sign and then simply choose my variable from the list. And so what this does is this changes this from a, a static value to a dynamic value that's being linked to a value from somewhere else. I'm going to do the same thing over here for the height of the tray. I'm going to give the, the, the dimension a name. And then I'm going to call up my variable, again, by hitting the equal sign and then choosing the appropriate value. Now, to round this profile out, I'm going to finish by drawing another vertical line and then hold control and select these two lines and build intelligence in between them by giving them a constraint. In this case, the constraint that I'm after is going to be the equal constraint. Now, one thing that I do like to do is I like to name my sketches with appropriate um, nomenclature. So that way, when I get back in here to modify this design, I know kind of what's driving what. So in this case, I'm going to call this a layout of tray. And then we will start our first piece of sheet metal. Now, in order to do that, we're going to start this tool called base flange tab. And we're going to define an end condition. In this case, the end condition is going to be an end condition of uh, mid plane with a value of 12 inches. Now, what I want to call note to is I'm, I'm being very precise of the way that I set this up. So when I start building a sheet metal part, I have an option to either create the material to the inside or the outside of my original profile. And in this case, I'm going to be creating a multi body part. And I want to make sure that I make note of where I'm putting this material. In this example, I'm going to be creating this material to the inside of my base flange. Now, what that gives me is that that drives the overall dimensions to be the actual outside to outside of that flange. Now, I'm going to come back to this sketch. So a little shortcut here is if you were to right click on any sketch, you're going to see an option called add to favorites. And what that does is that tags that sketch as a favorite at the top of the tree, and it gives me easier access to go and get it and modify it. Now that I have my base flange started, I need to go ahead and stiffen this, this part up. And in order to do that, I'm gonna create what we call these edge flanges. And these edge flanges are very simple. All I have to do is select any edge that I wanna put a return flange on, and then define the actual uh, location. I can define that by simply toggling this in and out. And you'll notice that SolidWorks is very intelligent, so it automatically miters these if they're gonna be an internal flange. Now, in this case, I want all these flanges to be the same value. And if I were to change this value, I want to change it everywhere globally. So again, I'm going to leverage that global value. I'm going to actually start writing an equation in here. By hitting equal sign, I'm then going to choose my standard variable called F. I'll give it a quick enter. 
and that's going to default to that a half an inch. Now I'm going to set this to be an overall. That means that that half inch is from outside to outside. And this is important, the flan position. This flan position drives the location of the material in reference to the edge that I selected. And in this example, I want all the material to be the inside of the edge. What that does for me is that maintains that overall diameter or that overall dimension of 12 inches from outside to outside. Now I've got a good piece of this started, but I need to finish this part by creating a second part, right? So essentially think of it as an assembly. As opposed to creating another part that is a standalone part, I'm actually going to leverage what we call multi-body modeling, where I'm going to model the second end cap in context of the first part. And this is what we call multi-body modeling. Now, the benefit of this is that this gives me the ability to actually create intelligence and precise fitment between the two interacting parts. In this case, I started a sketch and I converted my original layout sketch into the active sketch by using a convert entities. Now, to round out this profile, I'm going to draw three simple lines. Now, I'd like for this part to maintain symmetry. So just the same way that I added relationships earlier, I'm going to go ahead and add a relationship here to make these two lines equal to each other and then give it this a smart dimension. So that way I can drive the overall height of this end cap. Now, in a little bit later, I'm going to create a variation of this where I might want to change the width or in this case, I'm going to change the height of this end cap. So that way I can sell different models of this toolbox. So I want to come back to this, but, but in order for me to identify this easier, I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and give this dimension a name. Now you can do that from the property manager. You can also do it by simply double clicking it and coming up here to the top. Now this top edge is going to end up being an edge flange where a handle is going to get uh, mounted to. So let's go ahead and give this a standard value. Now I'd like to stay, I like for this um, dimension to stay uh, proportionate to my standard flange. So again, I'm going to hit the equal sign. I'm going to choose global variables and I'm going to choose my variable F, but this time I'm going to type in a little bit more complicated of an equation here. I'm going to say F times three. Now the second that I hit enter and confirm this, you're going to see it's going to auto calculate this. So what I have done by previous, by setting up those variables up front is I'm giving myself that ability to call that value in multiple locations. In this case, I'm calling it not only in multiple locations on a single part, but you're going to see on actually multiple parts that are, are, that are in context to each other. Now I'm ready to turn this into a piece of sheet metal. So I'm going to come back up here to my sheet metal tab. I'm going to choose base flange tab, but I want to choose this option called reverse direction. Now the reason is, is when I bring back my original part by hitting shift tab, I just hid that real simply by using what we call the tab command, which is an easy way to hide something on your screen. When I bring back that original body, what you're going to notice is that I designed my end cap so that way it is fitting exactly flush to the outside of the tray of my toolbox. Now that I have this done, I, I need to add some extra support flanges so that way this can actually be spot welded to that body. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to come over here and fire off that same edge flange that I used before. And I'm gonna choose these three edges, this bottom edge and these two side edges. But what you're gonna notice is that since this has been designed perfectly uh, coincident to the body is these edge flanges are actually technically overlapping. Well, I don't want to have to figure out any math myself. I want the system to kind of intelligently offset that for me. So I'm going to leverage what we call the flange position, and I'm going to tell the material to go to the outside of the part. So a huge benefit of using what we call a multi-body part model is that I ha now have the two um, parts, or what we call bodies, in the same file. So I'm not going to have to calculate what that clearance should be um, by toggling back and forth between multiple parts or maybe even an assembly. Now, on top of that, I know that, you know, when I form these up, they're not going to be exactly perfect. So I like to account for that. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to let SOLIDWORKS actually do some of the um, accounting for me. 
And the way that I do that is by turning on this option called offset, which is going to let me type in a value, which is going to give me a little bit of extra clearance between my, ref my return flange of the end cap and the main body flange that I modeled up previously. Now, on top of that, when I hit OK, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go ahead and set this to the standard value for a flange. And, and the big benefit to that, right, by, by doing a multi-body model is being able to have these two parts interact with each other. And, and so what do I mean by that? Well, if we were to come back over here into my equations and choose right click on it and choose manage equations, you're going to see here's my global variable. Remember, this variable called D is equal to eight, which is the depth of the tray. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that from eight and I'm going to change that to 10. By doing that, we're going to notice that the height's going to stay proportionate. So now the height should grow to five. And I'll, maybe I don't like the half inch. I'm going to change this to uh, 0.625. So we'll say this is going to be uh, 5 eighths. The second I hit OK, what you're going to notice is that since I'm driving all of these equations into the sketches and into the dimensions, everything is going to stay automatic and proportionate to each other. On top of that, if I were to scroll in right here, we're going to see that my, my clearance gets maintained between the two parts. Now I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to modify that and return those values to the original values because that's really what I want them at um, to start with. So we're going to return that to 8, return it back to half, we'll hit OK, and then we're going to see everything auto-adjust. Now I'm almost ready to create the second end cap, but before I do, I'm going to add a few other little details. One of those details is going to be um, adding a return flange over here, and you guessed it, I want this to be the standard value. So that way if I wanted to change this, it would change it everywhere. I want to make sure that this stays flush to the top. So I'm going to let SOLIDWORKS do the thinking for me, and I'm going to keep the material to the inside. And I really don't need any extra clearance. I'll turn off that offset. Now the second I hit OK, we can see my return flange gets created. And I'm now ready to set up what we call a mirror. Now, when you're working with multi-body parts, you can think of these bodies really as, um, as discrete parts that have been modeled up in one single file. So in this case, what I like to do is I'd like to take the right-hand side of this part, and let's go ahead and mirror it to the left-hand side. Now, when we do that, you're going to notice that there's actually three options when doing a mirror or a pattern. There's what we call features, faces, and then one of my favorites when working in a multi-body part is what we call a body mirror. And what that gives you the ability to do is take a chunk of material and move it or copy it, in this case, duplicate it to the opposite hand side. Now I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna create what we call a design table, which is gonna give me the ability to create variations of the design, but there is another sketch that I wanna uh, rename so I can find it easier. And that's gonna be this sketch that I use to create that base flange. And I'm gonna call this uh, sketch in cap layout. And in order to find it easier, again, a little shortcut that you can do is by right clicking on anything in your feature tree, you can say add to favorites. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna tag it to the top of the tree, which will make it a little bit easier for you to find later. Remember, double clicking on any sketch or any feature is gonna bring up those dimensions. And double clicking on the dimension is gonna give you the ability to edit it. Now we've almost got this designed uh, whipped into shape, but there is one last thing that I need to do, and that's go ahead and add this handle. Now to add this handle, I'm going to start a brand new sketch on the right plane, but I'd like for this handle to stay perfectly coincident and adjacent to those end caps. So that way, if I were to change the height or change the width or change the depth, this handle is going to always proportionately update. So one way that I can do that, is since I'm inside a multi-body multi part, is I can leverage that geometry from the existing body. In this case, I'm going to choose this inside edge of that flange, and I'm going to sit Convert Entities. And when I do, it's going to take uh, that flange, and it's going to turn it into a sketch on the right plane. At which point, I can now start designing my sheet metal part that's going to represent that handle. Now, the thing that I love about working in the multi-body uh, uh, environment 
is being able to create extrusions and cuts and other pieces of sheet metal that are linked to your original bodies. In this case, I'm not quite sure what the inside measurement is off the top of my head. So I'm gonna use an end condition called up to surface and I'm gonna drive this piece of sheet metal up to the inside edge of the first end cap. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. When I, when I hit okay here, what you're gonna notice is that this piece of sheet metal now is perfectly made it up and is now the exact width of my toolbox from left to right. Now, when you are working in a multi-body environment, you can always focus on any discrete body by simply right-clicking on it and choosing what we call the isolate command. And what that does is it just visually hides everything else that you're seeing, and it kind of makes it look like you're in a normal single body part. And in this case, what I like to do is go ahead and finish up this design. Now to do that, I need to put a couple more return flanges on the end, so that way I have a place to spot weld. I want these flanges to maintain the standards that I've already set up. So again, leveraging the equal sign gives me the ability to grab that global variable. And I wanna make sure that that flange material is to the inside of the part. So that way uh, my handle stays flush to the inside of the end caps. I'm gonna add a couple more flanges, uh, maybe one on either side of this. Again, using the same standardization. And in this case, I don't want those to be 90 degrees. I'm actually gonna offset those in to give it a little bit of a more smooth handle for, for the user. Now when I hit exit isolate, you're gonna notice that everything maintains. And if I were to make any to design changes, for example, coming back into my equations, if I wanted to change this from, let's say, 8 to 12, we're going to see thing every. We're going to see that everything is going to automatically update. Again, the be the benefit and the big value, right? The value add to this, as opposed to doing these all as standalone pieces, is that my parts are now interacting together perfectly and precisely. Now. To make sure that I didn't accidentally foobar something up and type in a wrong value or, or miscalculate on any of my inputs, let's go ahead and let SolidWorks evaluate this and let's look for any interferences to see if any of my sheet metal thicknesses are overlapping with any other pieces. To do that, I can go to Evaluate. I can choose this option called Interference Detection and then I can hit Calculate. And if I did everything correctly, which I did, you're going to notice that this says no interferences, meaning none of my parts are overlapping or colliding with each other. Now, what have we looked at so far? We've looked at creating what we call multi-body parts. The benefit to that is that these, these pieces are now interacting with each other. We've added a lot of intelligence into the model by leveraging what we call global variables with equations. In this case, we have a variable for the depth of our tray, we have the height, so that way the height is always staying proportionate to the depth. And we have a variable that's giving me the ability to, to use what I'm calling a standard flange. That way, if I needed to change this value, I'm not having to edit in multiple locations. Now, we're almost ready for manufacturing, but, you know, our sales team sometimes comes to us at the end of the, of the design or the end of a project, and they say, hey, guys, this looks really good. But, you know, we have another customer that wants to order something that is very similar to this, but just a, a little bit different. They wanna create a variation. So how can we do that without recreating all of the work that we've done? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and I'm gonna give this a part number. So I'm gonna say, this is my new MLC uh, 1500 series toolbox. 